In 2011, we expanded our forest carnivore surveys, and when we realized the massive effort that we were going to be undertaking, we decided that what we really needed was boots on the ground. So we went to some local community groups and asked if they might have some volunteers that would be willing to donate time. And that first winter, we weren't really sure what to expect, but to our surprise, we had this massive outpouring of support from the local community. We had over 140 volunteers donate nearly 2,000 hours. And these volunteers are what we call citizen naturalists, which are basically just anybody uh, who doesn't necessarily have any kind of science training that comes out and helps with a science project. We had Friends of Scotchman Peaks Wilderness, Idaho Conservation League, Selkirk Outdoor Leadership and Education. Um, John Hastings from the high school brought his kids out to get involved. We had kids from the community of Troy and their school system. You know, some of these groups like Selkirk Outdoor Leadership and Education, Seoul, I mean, their whole mission is to get kids out in the woods. And that fits in so well with, with the mission of Fish and Game. We want to engage people with their natural world. As soon as we kind of opened our minds and opened the doors to, you know, are these partnerships we've developed, um, that just kind of opened the floodgates of this, this amazing interest in this project. So we uh, undertook an incredible effort during the winter of 2011 and 2012. We had um, 140 volunteers participate in this project. Yeah, some of these sites are in some of the most extreme terrain in the, in the Panhandle, and we're doing it in the winter time. People are going up to 7,000 feet where the wind's blowing 30 miles an hour and the snow is going horizontally. And you know, I hear these stories just rolling in of these, these peaks people are getting up, they're getting up these drainages, and they're bringing, you know, bringing these bait stations out to some places that people don't get to a whole lot in the winter. It was a 24 mile round trip, ski trip, 12 hours, 12 and a half hours, something like that. So we started in the dark, ended in the dark. I mean, the challenges, some of them are really tough, but it's, I mean, it's well worth the price of admission. I mean, it's very, very rewarding to get out there and do this. It was an incredible experience for me, not only because I got to work with all of these really inspired volunteers and I got to see how much wilderness and how much um, stewardship meant to people here, but it, it also gave me the opportunity to express that to people and to share with people in the community. When we have had students that have been involved with the multi-species baseline initiative in several different forms, um, there's two things I really like out of it, well at least two. Uh, one of them is that they are doing real science and many of them will probably go into science careers and so this is an excellent exposure to what might the life of a scientist be. The other one is the notion of a citizen scientist and that is that maybe they won't go into science or a different kind of science maybe but that they can still be involved in um, a scientific inquiry into the the community and the natural systems in which they live. So with the contributions from the volunteer effort in 2011-2012 we were able to pretty much double the number of surveys that we got done that year. And since we had such great success using Citizen Naturalists to collect forest carnivore data, we've been using this awesome workforce to contribute to other portions of the project. Volunteers have helped build slug traps, take photographs, do amphibian surveys, even search through leaf litter for tiny snails. Well, it's clearly beneficial to the effort of the Fish and Game project to have the extra people and the extra manpower, the extra eyes and, and hands to do the work. And I think it's also equally beneficial to the people of Northern Idaho to be engaged in to understand the work. So they have a connection to understanding more than just the scenery, but the ecology. I think the biggest benefit of this entire project is that everyday people get to learn about wildlife and they get to become advocates for the wildlife. So we're building a community for conservation of animals. We're building a community for conservation of place. We're building a community of people who care passionately about North Idaho and Northwestern Montana. So as biologists, when we think about conserving species, our tendency is to think about data and numbers and population size. 
And our goal of this project was to produce this amazing data set, which we did. But the side benefits to the citizen naturalist program and the things we weren't really expecting are what have really blown us away. This program was able to generate all of this media interest for the project and for local wildlife. When the friends put pictures up on their Facebook page, it was really awesome to watch the comments of people roll in. When they put the picture of the lynx up, there were hundreds of comments coming in from Facebook pages around the world. For me as a biologist who focuses on numbers and data and population, to see that connection of people between them and wildlife is just a really cool and amazing thing. Gathering information is only one aspect of it. The other piece is um, sharing that information and engaging more and more and more people in the idea that we have so much to learn and there's so much out there that we can do to promote that learning and to share it with our community.